The thyroid gland is responsible for the release of another hormone called calcitonin. In addition, if you flip the thyroid hormone or thyroid gland over, on the back, you'll actually find four little sections that um, are their own gland. They're kind of hitching a ride here on the thyroid gland but they actually are their own separate glands and they're called the parathyroid gland. Both calcitonin and parathyroid hormone are involved in the regulation of blood calcium levels. Now, hopefully you remember that I discussed the importance of calcium in um, cell signal transduction as a very important second messenger. Calcium is also important for the mineralization of bone material and we therefore very carefully regulate it to make sure that we have enough calcium to control, um, to behave as a second messenger, to regulate uh, heart muscle contraction, for example, to regulate skeletal muscle contraction, smooth muscle contraction. These all rely on calcium as a second messenger. And of course, especially if you consider the heart, if calcium levels are in the blood are out of whack, that actually can cause some very serious arrhythmias um, and even can stop the heart under certain circumstances. And so we carefully, carefully regulate how much calcium is in the blood. And here's how it works. In the thyroid, uh, let me kind of orient you to this. So the parrot, the the uh, thyroid follicle, you'll recall that we talked about the follicular cavity. So here we've got a thyroid follicle and I'll just go ahead and color that follicular cavity in, uh, in purple. Now let me outline for you, and I guess I'll outline it in green, the epithelial cells. Okay, so you can see these right here. Okay, these are the epithelial cells that are going to be involved in the release of thyroid hormone. And so these are the ones that make the thyroid globin. These are the ones that take up the iodine. These are the ones that um, produce T3 and T4 and then dump it into the bloodstream. And so you can see several, situ several follicles here. You can see one there and one there and one there and one there and one there. Um, <coughs> and you can see these and their epithelial tissues. But these aren't the only cells found in the thyroid gland, of course. And so if you look here, let's see, what's a good color for them? Uh, I guess yellow. Yellow will be a good color for them. In this region here, we have cells called C cells, which are called clear cells. They don't stain as darkly as the epithelial cells of the thyroid gland. And so we would have several of them scattered throughout. I'm not super good at identifying them, but you know, maybe there and props there and, and in the other locations as well. And it's these C cells that are part of the thyroid gland that release the calcitonin into the bloodstream. Okay, calcitonin is released by these clear cells calcitonin okay and the parathyroid hormone on the other hand is not released by the thyroid gland at all but is instead released by these little parathyroid glands right there and so we'd call this parathyroid hormone or PTH now both of these are going to work in concert uh, to regulate blood calcium levels there's one more hormone that I need to talk about and this one is actually released by the kidneys called calcitrol. And um, it is important in regulating blood calcium levels as well. But we will primarily focus on these two. Okay. And so let's look at how that actually is going to work for us. Um, what we have here is a look at this homeostasis. First, let's notice the normal acceptable range for calcium. We keep it within a range of 8.5 to 11 milligrams per deciliter. That's our normal calcium ion levels. 
And if we are above or below that, homeostasis is lost. And so we'll look first at a disturbance that would result in the increase of calcium. So something's gonna happen, our blood calcium levels are too high, okay? So they're too high. So we've got our set point, we've seen our set point, and so that set point, if I doodle it right here, you know, that little set point right here is going to be the 8.5 to 11 um, milligrams per deciliter. And so if we are outside of that range, okay, we're too high, we've got to have a response because homeostasis is lost. Excess calcium will actually cause the heart to contract um, harder, okay? It's going to cause a harder contraction. And that can be problematic because that'll raise our blood pressure. And uh, so high blood pressure can cause tissue damage. We can have an aneurysm that ruptures with a blood vessel rupturing in our head. And so clearly high blood calcium levels are a bad thing. It can also cause muscle, contra muscle cramps, but muscle cramps just hurt like crazy and they don't kill you. Um, <coughs> usually. So if our calcium levels are too high, this is where calcitonin is going to kick in. So the calcitonin is going to be released from the thyroid glands from those C cells. And so this calcitonin right here, okay, is my chemical messenger. Now this is floating in the blood. We've released it from the C cells. It's going to look for a cell that has a receptor for calcitonin. And it's going to find those receptors on the kidneys and on the digestive system. Now you can probably predict what it should do. Think about it, before you look at anything else, imagine I'm, I'm holding my hand, you can't see me holding my hand, but imagine me holding my hand over the rest of this figure and just try to answer this without looking. If my calcium level is too high, how do I want my digestive system to respond? Think about that. And if in your head you said, well, calcium in the blood is too high, so obviously I don't want to absorb calcium from my food, bingo, you're right. And so we're going to want to reduce the absorption of calcium from the digestive system. Now kidneys, how do you want them to respond? Remember kidneys are involved in ion homeostasis. We really haven't talked about the mechanism, but you can probably predict since calcium is an ion and it dissolves in water, it would probably be present in the urine and likely there's some transporters involved. So think. If your answer is, oh, well obviously we need those transporters to transport more calcium out of the blood and into the filtrate so it becomes, it's lost in the urine, then bingo, again, woohoo, toot toot, whatever you want to celebrate, however you want to celebrate, you're correct. And if we go on and we look at that, that's exactly what we see. We increase the excretion of calcium by the kidneys, so it's going to show up in our urine. And we're going to decrease the amount of calcium being absorbed by the digestive tract, all thanks to this calcitonin. Okay? All thanks to this calcitonin. And, woo, okay, because we've, we've absorbed less, we've excreted more, we're back down to normal, everything's great, hunky-dory. Now I want you to imagine that we have a situation where we don't have enough blood calcium. Hmm, that's a problem. We don't have enough blood calcium. The heart's not going to contract as effectively. Skeletal muscle's not going to track as, contract as effectively. Smooth muscle's not going to contract as effectively. We've got an issue here. So now what do we do? Well, let's go to the next part of this. If we are in the other side, the flip side of this, homeostasis is lost by a decrease in blood calcium level. Ah, well, one thing, we can eat more calcium and, and absorb it from our digestive system, but maybe we hate foods that have calcium in them. Um, so let's look at this. The main cells that are going to respond to this are going to be the cells in our parathyroid glands, and they are going to secrete, here we go, here's our superhero, okay, this parathyroid hormone. Now the parathyroid hormone is going to float around in the blood and it's going to look for cells that have parathyroid hormone receptors. And it's going to find them. 
Not surprisingly, it's going to find them on the kidneys and the digestive system. Hold on with the bones. So now cover your hand over everything else and think about this. So calcium levels are too low. So how do I want my kidneys to respond? If you said you want your kidneys to excrete less calcium, you are correct. How about the digestive system? How do I want my digestive system to respond? If you thought in your head, oh, I want the digestive system to absorb more calcium, you are correct. Both of those situations would help to restore calcium levels in the blood. But what if you're not eating your calcium? Maybe you hate milk, maybe you hate cheese, maybe you're a vegan and you really haven't made the effort to eat the calcium rich foods. There's lots of calcium rich plant foods out there, but maybe you just are kind of being a little bit, oh, lazy is not the right world, but word, but you know, everything's kind of going around fast and you got to just grab and go sometimes. And so you're not really being as careful as you should. And so your calcium levels and your blood drop and there's not any in the food to replace it. At least there's not enough. So, sure, the kidneys can excrete less, but they're never going to excrete zero. And so they're going to continue to excrete it. And if you're not replacing the calcium that's being excreted by your kidneys, your levels are going to drop and they're going to keep dropping and they're going to keep dropping. And we can't have that because the heart is really kind of important and we need it to like contract and without calcium it's not going to contract and that kind of means death so we can't allow that we can't lose homeostasis that severely that would be majorly problematic so where are we going to get our calcium from if it's not coming from our diet where are we going to get it from ah bone this huge repository of calcium buried in all of those hardened um, calcified, mineralized uh, matrix, right? And so this lovely parathyroid hormone is going to trigger the osteoclasts, which are involved in breaking down bone. And we're going to start digesting and destroying bone material. And if this is done for a short period of time because you're really stressed and finals week and hey, who needs to eat healthy food because, you know, finals week, right? Then, okay, no big deal. So you remove some calcium from your bone and then as soon as you eat rich, um, calcium rich foods, you're going to replace the calcium and you're going to rebuild that bone and everything's fine. But of course, if you do this for a lifetime, if you're not getting adequate calcium for a lifetime, or if you're genetically predisposed to having low calcium levels, perhaps because of a minor variation in the way those calcium transporters work in the digestive system or the kidneys, or perhaps you drink a lot of soda, maybe. I don't know. I know that takes it out of your teeth, but I don't know about the bones. Anyway, the net result is a pathology. If we cannot keep those calcium levels high enough in the bloodstream and if we have to take them out of the bone, we're going to have osteoporosis. And uh, by the way, hormones affect this. This is why women are actually more predisposed to osteoporosis than men are. Doesn't mean men, you can't get it, but women are the more likely uh, to develop this condition. And so it's important to get calcium in your food. And there's ways to get it, even if you don't like milk or cheese or yogurt or uh, any other type of animal product that contains calcium. Anyway, thanks to parathyroid hormone, calcium levels in the blood go back up. And so we back down, back to homeostasis being restored and everything's great and our heart's working great and we're all happy and good. And so that's the basic process. Now, where does calcitrol sit in here? It's going to help with this process, but I'm really not going to dig into the exact mechanism because I don't know it, to be honest. And so we'll just kind of know that it's there and uh, we'll focus on calcitonin and parathyroid hormone.